It's pretty safe to say Interstellar Wars won't look like this. Instead, there'll be something very different indeed, utilising methods of logistics and psychological expertise in the vast stretching field that is interstellar space. Humans have never fought like this before, but they will one day. The nature of humans determines that. And so over the last couple weeks, I've compiled a list of five traditional attack strategies as well as three defense ones, which we all apply for our Star Wars starting now. First up, Blitzkrieg. It's safe to say this popular World War II German tactic wasn't adopted with interstellar logistics in mind. Even if our enemy alien civilization was based in the possible closest location in air another star, that would still be four light years away. This means a blitzkrieg is almost entirely possible. The full idea of it, as we now know, is to strike the enemies before the enemies can then react. And so assuming a blitzing pace of 20% speed of light, you would reach the enemy in 20 years. In this 20 years, you would probably spend a year or two speeding up, which the aliens would maybe see you through the telescope then you'd have to slow down, which includes pointing your thrusters right at your destination, which would be blindingly obvious to the enemy. And so it's just generally not a good idea, not to mention the ludicrous cost of sending weapons outside the sun's influence. Secondly, we've got guerrilla warfare, and because we can't send physical, unnoticed things to the enemy's territory, for the reasons listed before, we've got to attack this one from a different point of view. How about something that's pretty hard to destroy? That's right, information. Inflicting the downsides of guerrilla warfare on your alien civilization would be a much more complete task. This would be done via an information attack, sending broadcasts designed to rouse up an enemy civilization with a bit of good old propaganda involved. A benefit of this being that signals like this go at the speed of light, meaning relatively quick warfaring for us. This doesn't quite fit the definition of guerrilla warfare, but with the twist it becomes a very viable and fast option. Next up, we've got encirclement, when you cut off all of the enemy's supplies and push into them. First, space military fleets would probably have to be self-sustaining because they have to travel such vast wow. distances. This would re render supply lines much less key to, to army survival. Secondly, this works great on land where combat is close, but in space where it can go up to hundreds of thousands of kilometers between fleets, it's incredibly hard to maneuver and hold that position with the kind of weapons available. And lastly, space is three dimensions, and so to encircle a mass of people, you need to cover the length, height and width, another dimension and another level of difficulty for your space admirals. Second to last, we have a very interesting one, the feint strategy. In theory, you can maneuver a seemingly large fleet that would purposely give off a large amount of radiation in order to distract the enemy from the smaller and more concealed flank fleets that would maneuver away from Earth and then once in a point in space, turn towards the enemy's territory and go that way. It would be even better if these flank fleets were the type of weapons that didn't need to slow down. Examples would be kinetic impact devices or real big bombs. There's another thing you could do as well that would benefit you greatly with, with this kind of strategy, kind of similar to how nuclear war heads deploy three other decoys before the real thing. You could set up a bunch of expendable and cheap to transport decoys that would all enter the enemy planet at slightly different angles. Decisions like these would be made in the situation to do what's necessary to get the job done. Finally, we've got coercion and exactly like the other communication involved tactic, this one's completely feasible. It's pretty safe to assume that even aliens have ego and other exploitable traits. And because communication goes at light speed, strategic coercion would be a key part of any interstellar war. Many, many difficult decisions will have to be made based on perception of the enemy's power, because it's impossible to send spies or small attacks to the opposite side. Therefore, the more you can do to make yourself look scarier, or weaker, depending, will be a massive game changer in long distance conflicts. Part 2, Defense and the Interstellar Void So far, we've been talking in the frame of reference that humanity has been the attacker, the invading force. But what if we flip that the other way round, where we had to best fortify our solar system and deter any possible invasion from an alien force of superior technology? And so again, I've got some Earth defense strategies that we'll put through interstellar consideration. The last one's a bit out there, but you have to bear with me to see that one. Number 1, Information Defense This is the best defense method for the simple reason of the best defense to a war is making sure that the war doesn't start in the first place. I made that up now. Just like how the light speed transmission of radio signals can be used to give advantages to the invading fleet, it can also be used to spur off and weaken them. These measures would be taken in three different time periods. The time before invasion launch. Again, the most critical time in the war and its outcome would be determined by the handling of these messages. Second, the time when the invading fleet is in transit. During the stage, you're mostly preparing for battle, and so you want your enemy to do the same, but worse than you. 
And so during this stage, it would be probably better to communicate false ideas about your strength. You know, strong when weak, weak when strong kind of thing. Exactly what humans have been doing for millennia. And last but not least, the time of invasion. Like the last one, this would purely be based off the circumstances. If losing the war, messages of strength and courage amongst the citizens should be communicated, hinting at a lack of chance for surrender. Overall, this category is more like what we've seen on Earth in the last couple of centuries, and it's no surprise these transfer over to interstellar war. 2. Direct Detection and Retaliation Defense The most obvious of the defense tactics turns out to be one of the most practical ones as well. For this one, I want to reference Israel's Iron Dome, a massively advanced air defense system that destroys 9 out of 10 rockets launched into the city. It goes without saying that some kind of weapon defense system would need to be built for getting rid of any spacecraft hurtling towards our planets. Implications of this, however, would be so that 9 out of 10 is nowhere good enough. Just a single fast and heavy thing can have implications of magnitudes higher than nuclear bombs. This system has to never fail. It's got to be built that even thousands of relatively small warheads in a massive solar system would be immediately noticed and dealt with no matter the circumstances. We will dive into how this system could be improved in my next point, but first I want to stress the inherent importance of this system, as interstellar wars are likely to be a one strike and you're out scenario. 3. Take advantage of natural terrain. Now, this is the weird one. See, on Earth it would mean... I have the high ground! But in solar systems, it can mean something very different. Or similar, depending on how you look at it. It turns out, in order to conceal something, one option you have is to hide it behind something that's bigger. And solar systems have massive objects in them, namely stars, planets, and asteroids. Defense systems concealed behind these celestial bodies would be an amazing way to hide your power from an enemy force, making them expend valuable resources, finding out the hard way. The same can be said for attackers, however. Imagine aliens slowing down in our solar systems. Normally very easy to detect, but what if they slowed down the majority of their speed behind, say, the moon or Mars? Truly terrifying prospect. I think this will more be a key part of interstellar logistics than we think, because any advantage in the large open field of interstellar space is bound to be manipulated. Overall, the prospect of interstellar war is one with many factors, a game based on pure deceiving skill, precise knowledge of the enemy, and yourself as well as technology that takes advantages of the weak spot in solar system defense. If you made it all the way to the end of this video, the best thing you can do is subscribe. You'll be my 40th subscriber, and as always, thanks for watching.